Hi, this is Risha Rajan for Ask Audio, reviewing the Moog Grandmother. The Grandmother is the latest in the semi-modular line for Moog, after the highly successful Mother 32 and Drummer from Another Mother. Though unlike the other two semi-modulars, this one is a keyboard synth. It doesn't place all the patch points on the right, like the Mother 32 and DFAM. It's a two oscillator monophonic engine. You get a ladder filter, an envelope and LFO, and an arpeggiator slash sequencer. It also comes with an onboard spring reverb. Yes, an actual analog spring reverb, not an algorithmic based one. The build quality is exceptional, as you would expect from Moog. The color scheme used is a bit unconventional for Moog, but it does help visualize all the different components on the synth. On the rear, you get additional patch points, 5 pin DIN MIDI as well as USB MIDI. There's also an instrument input for processing external signals. Alright, so let's have a quick listen. This is one oscillator set to a square wave. Oscillator 1 here is an octave range of 32 feet to 4 feet. Nice wide range. Oscillator 2 goes from 16 to 2, so a slightly different range for that one. Now there isn't a control for pulse width, but there is a modulation input. So I can take this attenuator output and plug that into pulse width in. And with the attenuator offset dial, I can change the pulse width. The pulse width patch point is only for oscillator 1, so you can't do this to oscillator 2. Talking about oscillator 2, let's hear them both together, oscillator 1 and oscillator 2 mixed in. So higher octave control compared to oscillator 1, starting at 16 feet and going up to 2 feet. Oscillator 2 can be hard synced to oscillator 1. So now if we just hear oscillator 2 and change the pitch on oscillator 2, you get that nice hard sync screen tone. We can modulate the pitch with the LFO here, increasing the pitch modulation amount. The modulation is controlled by the mod wheel, so that has to be up for it to be audible. Now here it's affecting both oscillators simultaneously. But if you want to just affect one oscillator, we can patch the output of the LFO into the pitch modulation input on oscillator 2. And now only oscillator 2 is being modulated by the LFO. There's no control for this modulation, it's a really wide range modulation, but we can solve that problem by patching the LFO output to this attenuator and taking the attenuator output back into the pitch modulation input on oscillator 2. And now with the attenuation dial, we can control this modulation. There's a noise generator source here in the mixer section. But let's say I don't need the noise source and I need a third oscillator. I can run the LFO at audio rate, key track it with the keyboard input here, and then patch the output of the LFO into the noise input here on the mixer so that it'll replace the noise with this LFO which is now at audio rate. So now we can have a 3 oscillator voice. To tune it, we can bring in one of the oscillators and try to match the pitch. So that's pretty cool. 
Let's now check out the filter, the classic 24 dB per octave ladder filter. The resonance control here. Two key tracking options, half and full, and an envelope modulation amount dial. The filter can self-oscillate, so if I take away all the signals going into the filter, just crank up the resonance. Now we're hearing a sine wave from the filter. With key tracking, we can play this. So technically, we can produce four simultaneous voices from this synth. Pretty cool. Let's look at the LFO section, or the modulator. So we have three modulation destinations, pitch being one of them. As I mentioned earlier, this modulator is hardwired to be controlled by the mod wheel, so the mod wheel needs to be up in order to hear this modulation. There's pulse width modulation with this LFO. This affects both the oscillators when they're in the square or pulse mode. So even though only oscillator 1 has a pulse width modulation in patch point, both oscillators can be pulse width modulated with the LFO here. Lastly, the filter cutoff can also be modulated with this LFO. We can crank up the rate of this LFO to create audio rate modulation. Let's try this with pitch. Talking about audio rate modulation, there is a linear FM modulation input on oscillator 2. So we can take the output of oscillator 1 and plug that into the linear FM input on oscillator 2. Now let's hear that. Sounds pretty cool, but I would like to control this. So again, we can make use of the attenuator. So I'll take the output of oscillator 1, plug that into the attenuator, and take the output of the attenuator and plug that into the linear FM input on oscillator 2. And as you can hear, it's a very consistent tone, as you would expect from Linear FM. Pretty interesting that we get this on a mode synth. We typically don't see Linear FM, usually it's exponential. But always nice to have a better option, Linear FM being that better option, at least if you want that consistency and tonality. Now the LFO has a dedicated sample and hold output that's only available on the patch point, so let's make use of that. I'll plug it into this malt here, and then send it into the pitch input on oscillator 1. That sounds pretty crazy at audio rate, so let's slow it down. Now since we have a mult here, we can also take a copy of that sample and hold and use that to modulate the filter cutoff.
So if I unplug the pitch modulation, you should hear the filter cutoff modulation. And if I unplug the filter cutoff modulation, that's the pitch modulation. We have one more out on the mult, so let's plug that in to the pulse width modulation input on oscillator 1. Let's make sure it's a pulse shape. And now we have three different parameters being modulated with that sample and hold signal from the LFO. Very helpful to have a mult built into the synth like this. We also get a high pass filter that is not in the signal path, it needs to be patched in. So I'll take the output of oscillator 1, plug that in to the input on the filter, and take the output of that high pass and plug it in to the input on the low pass. So now we have this custom bandpass tone. I have patched the low pass into the VCA input, but this is not required as the low pass is normal to the VCA input. Let's take a look at the arpeggiator and the step sequencer. Very simple and straightforward to use. Just turn it on here. We're in arpeggiator mode. And now when I hold down a chord, those notes get arpeggiated. We can control the rate of the arpeggiation with this dial. I can engage hold so I don't have to hold down the notes. And now my hands are free to change up all the other parameters. There's also a tap tempo feature to tap in the rate. You can create some nice acidic type lines with this. I think I've held it back for too long now. Let's have a listen to the spring reverb. That's when it's completely wet and we're just hearing the spring reverb sound. But a blend of dry and wet sounds best. There's a direction control for the arpeggiator, it was set at random right now, but you have two other options. So pretty simple and straightforward, the arpeggiator. Let's now check out the sequencer. So I'll switch to sequencer mode. Hit play over here. Hold down a note. And now we're hearing a sequence. With this switch here, you can change up the sequence, so you get three different slots. Now this mult can also be used as a mixer. Let me show you an example. I'm going to take the output of oscillator 1 and plug that into the high pass filter here. Take the output of the high pass filter and plug it into one of the mults. Next, I'm going to take the output of oscillator 2, plug that into the filter input and take the output of the filter and plug that into the next input on the mult. Now these two signals can be mixed in and the output of that I can take out from the bottom mult and plug that into the VCA. So now I have two separate signal paths for oscillator 1 and 2 respectively. Oscillator 1 is going to the high pass and oscillator 2 is going to the low pass. Typically not recommended to use mults as mixers, but on the grandmother you can, as long as you're mixing audio rate signals and not control signals. Cool, so that's the grandmother. Another great new synth from Moog, a great new addition to the semi-modular line of synths that they have. 
and with its 37 different patch points, it should play really well with the Mother 32, the drummer from another mother, or any other your accent. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this review. This is Rishabh Rajan for Ask Audio, and I'll see you in the next one.